Hello, I'm Daniel from Teach Kids Robotics, and in this lesson, we'll be covering How Do Robots See? An Introduction to Computer Vision, Cameras, and LiDARs. So, humanoid-style robots often have eyes that allow them to see, but how do they work? These robots often have two lens-like objects, but how do they work really, knowing what's in the environment? So, if we consider sensors again, a digital camera is a sensor that allows a robot to take a picture of the environment to identify what's going on around it. Cameras are found in many robots today, from cars, to robotic arms, to robotic laundry machines. But how do cameras actually let robots see? Digital cameras enable computer vision, by which a computer can process an image and understand what is inside using math. So consider the image on the right. We can separate this digital image into a grid, and then we can perform mathematical operations on that grid in order to classify or identify what is in the image. And we can see on the right side, we can identify the dog or the bike or the car in the background, all using math on the original image. But how does this work really? So let's first consider what is a camera image. Since computers understand the world digitally, in binary with ones and zeros, this means that for a camera image, the image must be represented digitally as well. So to represent the image, we can convert that into a grid, and that grid can be represented as a matrix of numbers. And in this example below, we have a heart, which can be represented as a heart on a grid, and then that grid can be transformed into a grid of numbers, known as a matrix, where that set of numbers reflects what is actually going on in the original image. What is a matrix exactly? A matrix is simply what we call a set of rows and columns <clears throat> that, if we consider screen resolution, can be like 1920 by 1080. A matrix with 1920 rows and 1080 columns. We can also represent an image as a matrix by converting it to a grid of 1920 by 1080 blocks, filling in each block with a pixel. Now a pixel is the term for the individual dot in the image. And this contains information about color that helps us build up the original image. So what can we do once we have this matrix? This mathematical representation of the real world or an image known as this matrix allows us to perform operations known as convolutions on the matrix to identify different features of the image, such as edges. In the picture to the left, we can see the edges of the original image are clearly defined, but these were identified using simply a single matrix operation. If we think to ourselves, how, what, how do we identify an edge in an image? We can determine it to be a, an area in our original matrix in which the set of numbers differ greatly from the numbers around them because this would form an edge. Consider the line with the corresponding matrix on the right. Finally, what is convolution and how does it work? We can visualize convolution as this matrix operation by which we multiply one matrix by another in order to get a resulting matrix that has inf information encoded inside of it, such as the boundary edges of the original image. This submatrix is known as a kernel, and different kernels allow us to perform different operations on the image, such as performing image blurring, or border detection, or sharpening. Putting it all together, taking digital camera images, translating them to matrices, and performing mathematical operations on those matrices through convolutions allow us to classify using mathematical models what actually is in an image. Now these, these images and post-processed matrices full of data can be fed to special models 
which are kind of pre-trained pieces of artificial intelligence, which can look at these numbers and identify key features that make up either a person or a car or a traffic light. Switching from digital cameras to another sensor, the LiDAR, we can go and investigate another way robots are able to see the world around them. So while cameras are great for computer vision, they have a key limitation, which is that they rely on light in the environment since they're a passive sensor. So this can be problematic if you're operating at night or in low light environments. So a popular sensor is known as a LiDAR or light detection and ranging, which is an active sensor that sends laser beams into the environment and measures the time it takes for the reflection to return. So how does LiDAR work? LiDAR is actually found in cars today and is used in the safety systems to enable, for example, the automatic braking. And it shoots lasers into the environment and is able to calculate based on the time it takes the light pulses to reflect to see how far away a given object is. Now, what does this actually look like? So this data, this, this laser scan information on the return rays can also be stored in a matrix. And this matrix is known as a point cloud, since every point or laser that is returned gives us information about how far away and how far that laser traveled. So the scene on the left, if you were to visualize how does a LiDAR see it, we can see on the right, there's no sense of color, there's only depth information, because we only know how far each individual ray of light traveled before it returned to our sensor. Now, depth information is really useful for applications such as self-driving cars, because we're not interested in what something looks like, we're only interested in how far away it is, and whether or not we're going to hit it. This information can be used, such as on the right side here, to classify also objects such as other cars on the road and get an idea of whether or not the road in front of the car is open. So I hope this deep dive into both digital cameras and LiDARs helped you understand how robots are actually able to see the world around them by processing and performing mathematical operations on these digital images and point clouds from these laser scans they're able to, to, to classify and identify key features around them in order to understand the environment. So I leave with the question of have you seen any robots with cameras or lidars around you? Feel free to leave a comment below and let me know if you have any other questions. In our next lesson, we're going to be covering in more detail how robots actually decide what to do. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. This video has been brought to you by Teach Kids Robotics. You can visit us at teachkidsrobotics.com to check out other information and blog posts regarding robotics. Additionally, we offer curated lists of STEM kits in order for you to try robotics at home. Check out the link in the description.